hello students so in today's class we are going to start a chapter magnetic circuits so this is the second chapter in our electrical and electronic devices subject so our chapter name is magnetic circuits so already uh, we know what is an electric circuit so generally electric circuit is having uh, a voltage or current source with some uh, elements like resistors or capacitors or inductance and it is a closed uh, circuit so electrical circuit is a closed circuit in the same manner it is having a voltage source it is having a uh, current flowing the current will flow only when there is a closed path so this is generally a electrical circuit in the same manner so there will be a mechanical circuit also so mechanical circuit means so we know that if there is a magnet let us take this bar magnet which is having north pole and south pole magnetic lines will be formed between north pole to south pole that means magnetic flux will travel from north pole to south pole so therefore we can see some field patterns in this manner so th these are the field patterns if it is a bar magnet if it is a bar magnet the field patterns will be like this and these are called as magnetic lines or we can say them as field lines that means flux is traveling in this manner from north pole to south pole so here we can say this is one magnetic circuit if you take one line path so this is a magnetic circuit here magnetic lines forms a closed loop that means magnetic flux will travel from north pole to south pole in outside the magnet and south pole to north pole in inside the magnet so that we have seen in the properties of uh, magnetic lines okay so in physics also we can see this that means a magnetic field is having a closed path we can say it as a closed path or closed loop so therefore here from north pole to south pole magnetic flux will be there so this is the magnetic lines and we can say we know some terms flux density magnetic field uh, uh, number of flux lines per area is equal to flux density right which have denoted by p and uh, the units are tesla so like this there will be a magnetic circuit okay and already we have uh, learned magnetic lines or magnetic field patterns will be there around a current carrying conductor in the fifth in our first chapter so there will be a magnetic field around a current carrying conductor if a conductor is there that is carrying the current so there will be a field magnetic field uh, around this conductor and the field will be in different patterns for different uh, structures for straight line or for solenoid or for toroid so there will be different uh, field patterns will be there so that we have completed in our first chapter so but here so just we know that according from the first chapter we came to know so there will be a magnetic field there will be a magnetic field around a current carrying conductor okay and this as having some field patterns right so they they are having some different shapes and in the same manner whenever a current carrying conductor is placed in a magnetic field so whenever a current carrying conductor is placed in a magnetic field so let us take this is a magnet which is having a north pole and placing north pole here and south pole here so for a easy explanation so magnetic lines are traveling from north pole to south pole so these are the magnetic lines 
that means this is the magnetic field so this is the magnetic field i am placing a current carrying conductor in this magnetic field i am placing a current carrying conductor in this magnetic field so whenever this current carrying conductor is placed in a magnetic field so this current carrying conductors experience a mechanical force that means the magnetic field not allows to stay the mag uh, current carrying conductor in the magnetic field so just it throws away the conductor from its place to some it, it throws the conductor from its place so that means a object is moving so therefore it is called as a force that means we can say that whenever a current carrying conductor is placed in a magnetic field it experiences a mechanical so this can be explained very clearly so that is our first topic so our first topic is mechanical force mechanical force on a current carrying conductor so this is 2.1 mechanical force on a current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field so this is our first topic placed in a magnetic field so for explaining this i am taking some figures so let us take and before that we uh, we have to know that uh, what is the cross and what is the dot symbol what is the cross and what is the dot symbol so once again here i will explain so cross so cross means current entering into the paper that means if you draw a uh, if it is a paper and if you have to show the current entering uh, the uh, path of current it is going out or we can easily show if it is going up or down but we cannot show it is going inside or it is coming outside for to for symbolic representation for that we can do like this cross and dot we will use this cross and dot right so here so here we can see this cross means current into the paper that means current is entering into the paper and dot means current is coming outside the paper so this is entering into the paper and this is coming outside the paper so that you have to know so if i am showing the cross means the thing is that current is going inside so current is going inside and if i am showing the dot means the current is coming outside from the paper so that means from the drawing so and uh, one more thing according to thumb rule according to thumb rule we can find out direction of magnetic field we can find out the direction of magnetic field around a conductor for example a conductor is there right so a conductor is there if current is flowing through the conductor in the upward direction to know the direction of the magnetic field we know that there is a magnetic field around this uh, a uh, current carrying conductor but the magnetic field is in which direction so to know the direction of that magnetic field we have to use this thumb rule so we have to use the thumb rule so thumb rule means just you hold your uh, uh, right hand so placing a thumb upside so just hold your right hand placing a thumb upside and hold the conductor like this okay so just hold the conductor so the thumb shows the direction of the current and the other fingers other four fingers encircling the conductor shows you the direction of the magnetic field that means if current is going upward direction the magnetic field will be going in the anti clockwise direction this you have to remember so first of all 
So whenever current is going in the upward direction, according to the thumb rule, the magnetic field will be in the anti-clockwise direction. When the con conductor, is, when the current in the conductor is going in the downward direction, the current flows will be in the clockwise direction. So same, just you place the thumb downside and you just encircle it like this. So then you can see that the fingers are encircling in this manner. So that means whenever current is flowing in the downward direction, the magnetic field direction will be in the clockwise direction. Right? So just you have to remember. So these are the basic things. Right? Okay, now let us see how this force will be uh, produced in a current carrying conductor whenever it is placed in a magnetic field. Now let us take uh, two magnets placing north pole and south pole in the opposite direction. So there will be the magnetic lines from north pole to south pole. Right? So there will be the magnetic lines from north pole to south pole. Now I will place a current carrying conductor like this. This is my current carrying conductor dot, sorry cross. So cross means what? The current is entering into the going inside the current is going inside if the current is going inside then what will be the direction of the magnetic field means if this is the direction of the current so then this will be the direction of the magnetic field okay so therefore so the magnetic field direction will be like this clockwise direction clockwise the, the magnetic field direction is clockwise direction why because the current is entering into the paper just you hold your thumb and show you just uh, place it on the paper uh, facing the thumb to the paper side so then you can easily know that the current is the fingers will encircle in the clockwise direction so therefore we can clearly know that magnetic fields around the conductor is in the clockwise direction so that means this is the clockwise direction right now so whenever this current carrying conductor is placed in the magnetic field it experiences a mechanical force that means this conductor will be thrown out from this place to some place which is in this direction like this so this conductor will never uh, stay here the magnetic field will push this conductor in this direction why in this direction means if you see here the direction of the main magnetic field is in downward direction and coming to here the direction of the magnetic field is in the downward direction here it is in the opposite direction and if you see the another half the direction of the magnetic field of the conductor and the main field is in the same downward direction. So therefore, the strength of the magnetic field will be more here. So magnetic strength is more. So therefore, this side magnetic strength is less, and this side magnetic strength is more. So therefore, the magnetic strength where we are having more, so that will push the conductor to the weak side. So, when the magnetic field is weak, that side it will be pushed. So, therefore, we can say that magnetic uh, strength is high. So, therefore, the conductor is moving out of that place in this direction. So, that means the conductor has moved from here to here. So, therefore, we can say that a force is applied. So, by this we can say that whenever a current carrying conductor is placed in a magnetic field, it experiences a mechanical force so here we can say when the main flux is vertically downwards so here in this figure we able to see that 
the main flux C is vertically downwards. That means in this direction. And the field of the conductor, that means uh, conductor is having some magnetic field around its. So therefore, the field of the conductor is in the clockwise direction. That means let us say in this direction. Right? If we place this conductor in between this magnetic field conductor is having a magnetic field in a clockwise direction so magnetic lines are in the downward direction so coming to here just before what i have said the direction of the main field and the conductor field is in the opposite direction first half side and next half side both the direction of the conductor field and main field are in the downward direction. So therefore here the flux will become addition combined and here the flux will not combine. Why? Because they are in the opposite direction. Compared to this side, this side magnetic field flux density will be more and here magnetic flux density will be less. Anyhow these magnetic lines are having an elastic property. So here what happens, uh, magnetic lines come here and they form a path like this. Magnetic lines total combine with the conductor field and they will form a path like this. And due to the field strength, so magnetic field is more, therefore this magnetic field will push the conductor to the sideward direction. So that is the thing, how the conductor moves from that original place to the other place right so this is if the conductor if the magnetic field direction is the downward direction next let us see So let us take a new page. Now let us see if the conductor is having a dot. That means now my magnetic lines are in downward direction same as before. And this is my north pole and this is my south pole. Conductor lines, magnetic main field uh, magnetic lines are in the downward direction as usual as before but not now what i am doing means so just i am taking the conductor in which i am representing it with a dot so representing with dot means what the magnetic field in the con around the conductor is in the opposite direction that means anti clockwise direction now if i place this conductor in between the magnetic field I am placing here and this is showing as dot and this is the direction of the magnetic field anti-clockwise direction now if you take this side if you take this side this half side what happens the direction of the main field and the direction of the conductor field is in the downward direction that means the field strength is more this side flux density will be more this side and coming to the other side the direction of the magnetic field is in the downward direction and the direction of the conductor field is in the opposite direction so therefore the flux weakens here and flux strengthen this side so flux will be more this side and flux weakens this side so therefore again due to this elastic property our magnetic lines both combine and will they will form a path like this and they will pushes the conductor in this direction right so you can see if conductor if the current in the conductor is going entering inside the direction of the force is 
perpendicular to left side if the conductor is coming out of then direction of the force in the perpendicular right side so this can be given by left hand and right hand rules Fleming's left hand and Fleming's right hand rule will show you uh, how this uh, we can according to this Fleming's left hand rule we can find out the direction of the uh, force right so that's, uh, that is how a mechanical force on a current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field will happen so the magnitude of the force on the conductor in both cases of course if the uh, if the current is entering inside if the current is coming outside the expression will be the magnitude of the force will be same that means the f is equal to we can simply say that f is equal to b into i into l newtons f into b into i into l newtons so where we can say so b is equal to flux density and i is equal to current through conductor so this is in amperes and flux density means already we know the units is tesla and l is equal to length of the conductor and already we know that f is equal to force on conductor so by this we can simply say that the force of the conductor is directly proportional to the flux density and the force of conductor is directly proportional to the current and the force of conductor is directly proportional to length of the conductor right if for example if conductor is inclined at an angle that means if the conductor is inclined with an angle like this or like this or like this then another element will comes into the picture that is f is directly proportional to sin theta angle between the main magnetic flux and the force angle between the main magnetic flux and the force so therefore f is directly proportional to sin theta so by this we can say that f is equal to b into i into l sin theta newtons so this is the magnitude of the force right so f is equal to b into i into l sin theta so that is the magnitude of the force either the conductor is uh, in both the conditions when the current is entering into the or when the current is coming out of the uh, towards us okay so that is a, a magnitude now let us see expression for the force on a current carrying conductor that means we have to derive how this f is equal to b into i l sin theta has came so we have to derive this one f is equal to b into i into l sin theta so we are going to next topic that is 2.2 expression expression for the force expression for the force that means f is equal to b into i into l sin theta so that expression we are going to derive so for this first let us consider a straight conductor carrying a current of i amperes in the place of paper that means let now let us take a current carrying conductor straight uh, straight conductor which is carrying a current of uh, i ampere and which is having a length of l so due to small element length dl let us take small element here somewhere let us take a small element of length let us take this is as dl 
the magnetizing force H at point P will be. So therefore, just we take a point P at an angle of some theta and with a distance of some R, right? So this is an angle theta also. So according to our uh, bio Savatla, which we have studied in our first chapter, we, uh, we have derived a formula that uh, H is equal to I into D into L sin theta divided by 4 pi R square. So this is according to bio Savart's law. So we have discussed in the first chapter also. According to bio Savart's law, we know this one, right? So corresponding flux density we know the formula for flux density actually B is equal to mu into H. So where mu is called as a permeability and H is the field strength. So mu into H. So just you substitute the formula of H here. So therefore you will get B is equal to mu into I into DL sin theta divided by 4 pi R square Tesla. Units of flux density is Tesla. Now, so this, uh, this is the field which acts on P. That means this is the flux density which will act on the acts at a point P. So perpendicular to the plane of the paper. And if a magnetic pole strength of M Weber is placed at P, for example, if uh, let us place some M Weber's, let us place some M Weber's of uh, magnetic pole strength denoted by M in place of P in place of P it will experience a force of then whenever we are placing some M Weber's at point P so then the expression will become B is equal to M into mu into I into D L sin theta divided by 4 pi R square so just we have given some strength to this P. So that strength is M vapors. Okay. So now force on the magnetic pole. That means force at point P is equal to M into mu naught I T L sine theta divided by 4 pi R square. So as we know that mu is equal to mu naught into mu r where mu r is equal to 1 in place of air or vacuum so therefore i have just substituted mu is equal to mu naught so just i have substituted mu is equal to mu naught here so therefore my formula has become m into mu naught into ideal sin theta by 4 pi r square so up to here very clear next according to the newton's third law of motion so just we say that if a conductor carrying current exerts a force on the pole in the same manner a pole exerts some force on the conductor also that means for every force there will be opposite and equal force if some force is acting at a point p so then some force by the p will be also acted on oppositely on the conductor so therefore we can say that force on the element dl so force on element dl why because due to the dl only we are getting this one so force on element dl is equal to same m into mu i dl sin theta divided by 4 pi r square so therefore we can say m into mu divided by 4 pi r square i dl sin theta let us write like this so m into mu into 4 pi r square that is nothing but b i dl sin theta okay so b i dl sin theta we are getting like this this is total is called as b so where b is the flux density at a distance r from the magnetic pole strength with m vapor so that means this b is nothing but b is the flux density at a distance of uh, R from a magnetic 
coal of strength m vapors that means here so this is the r so this is the p point from here to here the distance is r and that b is the flux density at a distance of r from the magnetic pole strength of m vapors so that value is b is equal to mu into m divided by 4 pi r square tesla so where b is equal to mu into h so that means we can say that h is equal to m by 4 pi r square so this is the only uh, due to a small part of length dl the total force of the conductor is obtained by integral that means to find out the total force of the conductor for total l so we can just obtain by integrating this above formula 0 to l b into i dl sin theta so if you integrate we will get uh, f is equal to b into i into l sin theta so this is the derivation how you will get f is equal to b into i into l sin theta this, uh, this is the derivation now when we will get this f is maximum when we will get this f is maximum means we will get f we will get maximum force when theta is equal to 90 degrees when theta is equal to 90 degrees why because if theta is equal to 90 then sine theta is equal to 1 so 1 is the maximum value in the sine values so therefore f is equal to b into i into l sin theta means into 1 so therefore we will get a very clear value f is equal to b into i into l if sin theta is equal to 45 degrees so then what you will get f is equal to b into i into l sin 45 that is nothing but uh, 1 by root 2 so that means 1 by root 2 times of b into i into l sin theta that is very less if sin theta is equal to 0 then you will get 0 value so therefore total force will become 0 that means what it, what it is telling means it shows you if the angle between if the angle between main field and conductor field is 90 degrees so then you will get maximum force right so when this is 90 degrees you will get maximum force if this decreases if, this, if there is no uh, angle between this magnetic field and the main field so there will be no intersection between these two fields therefore f is equal to zero right? because theta is equal to zero f is equal to zero so if the angle is moving far away from here to here so you will the f value will be increased 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 and at f is equal to 90 degrees you will get maximum force right so this is the expression for the force when a conductor is placed in a magnetic field right the force can be expressed in the vector form as like this f l so f b and i lie along pre mutual perpendicular direction so it is and uh, this uh, direction of uh, uh, magnetic field and the direction of the motion can be said by uh, which I have said Fleming's left hand rule the direction of the current the direction of the motion and the direction of the magnetic field can be expressed by this Fleming's left hand rule that is our next topic 2.3 so now we are going to see what is this Fleming's left hand rule and what it shows. So just the direction of the force on a current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field can be found from Fleming's left hand rule. So just you to know the direction of the magnetic field, uh, the direction of the force on a current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field can be found. So you can find by doing uh, by this Fleming's left hand rule. So how you how you will find out means just hold the thumb forefinger that means first finger middle finger that means second finger thumb forefinger middle finger of left hand at right angles that means perpendicular to each other mutually perpendicular to each other where the forefinger shows you 
forefinger represents the direction of the feet. So let us say so thumb first finger and this is the second finger that means this is the fore finger and this is the middle finger placed 90 degrees to each other that means it is a 3d view so placed mutually perpendicular to each other they are 90 degrees to each other like this so thumb will show you the direction of force or motion so thumb will give you the direction of force or motion and where forefinger will give the direction of field and remaining middle finger represents the direction of current so that means this will show you the direction of the current this will show you the direction of the motion and this will show you the direction of the field if the field is in this direction okay, so if the field is in this direction then if the current is in this direction then you will get a force in a direction of this way okay so that means 3d means uh, just if you uh, just you can hold your uh, left hand so just you hold your left hand placing three fingers like this 90 degrees to each other so you can simply identify what is what what is thumb what is uh, uh, middle finger and what is the first finger that means four finger middle finger so just you place uh, perpendicular to each other and just you assume or just you place uh, if you know the direction of the current so you just place the four finger if you know the direction of the magnetic field just you place the four finger in the direction of the magnetic field so then remaining two fingers will show you the direction of the current and the direction of the motion that means on which direction the force is exerted that you can find out just by the thumb so thumb means m m means motion okay so without m we cannot pronounce thumb so therefore m means motion of the conductor and four finger so four finger so we are having two F's for finger that means field or flux direction and remaining middle finger so middle finger you are having I without I you cannot pronounce middle so middle means without I you cannot pronounce so therefore I means current so that means current direction so this means left hand rule will show you the direction of the current the direction of the field and the direction of the motion so that is the Fleming's left hand rule. So, very very important rule to find out the directions. So, here you can see Fleming's uh, left hand rule. So, here I have uh, given a figure. So, this is uh, left hand. Just you hold the uh, thumb, first finger, and middle finger like this so just you hold uh, perpendicular to each other so this is the 90 degrees and from this to this also you have to there will be 90 degrees okay so here the thumb will show you the direction of the motion and where the first finger will show you the uh, magnetic field direction and where the middle finger will show you the direction of the current so this is the middle finger i and this is the first finger ff flux and this is the thumb that means m m for motion and f for field and i for current so like this the fleming's left hand rule will show will uh, help you to find out the directions of motion field and current motion field and current so that is the Fleming's left hand rule. Okay, and we are having one more rule also that is Fleming's right hand rule. So that will be helpful uh, in case of uh, generators. 
and this will be helpful in case of uh, motors okay So here we can uh, see the figure how we will represent uh, the direction of the current motion and uh, field. So here we are having a so here we are having a uh, magnets and uh, these are the magnetic lines from north pole to south pole. That means uh, this will show you this one. So this finger will show you the direction of this magnetic field and next this is our thumb so this thumb means this is the current direction right so uh, sorry uh, this is the direction of the uh, force so this is the direction of the force and next current direction that means current is like this it is coming inside so this is the direction of the current which is represented by our middle finger right so this is the middle finger so for example if you if the current direction has changed that means if the current direction has changed from uh, the uh, opposite direction that means current is going outside if the current is going outside so just what you have to do means uh, just you reverse this finger so you place this finger opposite side so therefore the direction of the force will also change that means these two fingers will be changed and the direction of this finger will not change so the direction of the middle finger and the direction of the thumb will change so that will show you that if direction of current changes then direction of the force will also change direction of the magnetic field will not change but if you change the direction of the current then the direction of the force will also change if there is any problem you can uh, see uh, just by uh, your own experience uh, just you place your left hand uh, thumb middle finger and uh, first finger in this manner so just place in this manner and just you reverse this finger that means you place this finger back side and this thumb will come down downwards so therefore you can say that if the current is going inside then the direction of the uh, thumb will come downwards the direction of the thumb will go downwards so, so that you can find out so just by the left hand rule for example if we ask you to write down the statement then how you will write so it states that hold the thumb forefinger and second finger of the left hand at right angles to each other if the forefinger indicates the direction of the magnetic field and the second finger indicates the direction of the current then the thumb indicates the direction of the force acting on the conductor so this is the statement for the fleming's left hand rule for example if the conduct if the current in the conductor is reversed that means if the direction of the current is reversed keeping the direction of the magnetic field unchanged that means if the magnetic field direction is not changing but the direction of the current has changed then what happens the direction of the uh, force will also change right so keeping the direction of the current in the conductor unchanged the direction of the force will also reverse for example if you change the magnetic field direction if you change the magnetic field direction like this so if this will become north pole and if this becomes south pole then the direction of the magnetic field will be in the opposite direction so that means now the direction of the uh, magnetic field now the direction of the magnetic field is changing like this so that means what happens according to that if the direction of the magnetic field is reverse but the current direction is not changed then the direction of the force will also change that means if you change any one direction if you change either current direction or if you change the magnetic field direction then definitely the direction of the force will also change that is the conclusion from the Fleming's left hand rule Okay students, uh, in today's class we have seen uh, 
some topics regarding magnetic circuit uh, chapter so first we have seen uh, how force will be exerted in a current carrying conductor current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field so this we have explained how force is experienced in a current carrying conductor if it placed in a magnetic field and second we have seen expression for the force so we from the first question we know that uh, some force is exerted so next what we have seen we have seen the expression for f that is equal to b into i into l sin theta so we have derived this expression right and next third we have seen uh, how the direction of the force will be known that means when the force is exerted and we know the magnitude also but we have to know the direction of the force so that means to know the direction of the force we have seen Fleming's left hand rule is helpful Fleming's left hand rule so according to the Fleming's left hand rule thumb first finger and middle finger are placed perpendicular to each other that means 90 degrees to each other so therefore thumb will give you the direction of the motion that means force first finger will give you the direction of the field and middle finger will give you the direction of the current so this we have explained in the in today's class so uh, better next class we will see some expressions between two parallel current carrying conductors and some other things so i think uh, today uh, these are the topics which we have discussed i hope you understand so let us see in the next class thank you so much